Everybody's always looking towards the future. But I say the future is now. It's just as stupid as we imagined. History's man of mystery. Goaded by an insane lust to dominate and destroy. His mystic powers and physical strength made him the most dangerous man of his time. No one knew him. They only feared him. Now at last, the real shocking story can be told. In my last video, I talked about what Adult Swim would become. How Space Ghost Coast to Coast established the format their animation and humor would take in the near future. Now I can actually get into what Adult Swim is. A block of late night television on the Cartoon Network so dedicated to looking like they don't give a shit about what they air, people have a tendency to believe them. I like to think I'm here to dispel that notion a bit. Adult Swim shows are often stupid, but the creative mentality behind them certainly isn't. The boys and girls at William Street have always had an objective. It's not that they'll make anything, it's that they take more shots and more directions than any other network. And the original five shows they produced in-house all took their shots in the direction set by our old friend, Mike Lazo. See, Lazo always pushed for weirder. If he wanted a show on Adult Swim, the goal was to give him something he'd never seen before. And as a man with something of a reputation for having seen everything, that was no mindless task. He would probably say that it's more important to be interesting than funny. For most of its existence, Lazo kind of was Adult Swim. And with more ideas than money at his disposal, he set out with the goal of breaking all the conventions of television. That mentality has been famous, if you pay close enough attention to this stuff, for putting many of its biggest creative voices at odds with him. Animation legends have had their pitches rejected by Lazo, but he's also helped create them, so I guess it balances itself out. Adult Swim has never been in the business of churning out hits. They're all about making something different and staying relevant. But even in that kind of anarchic, laissez-faire creative environment, there's always going to be an outlier. Someone who experiments with the form, no matter how loose it may be. And of the original lineup, no show was more experimental than C-Lab 2021. And it's head writer, Adam Reed. So what exactly do I mean by experimental? C-Lab is by no means one of the more obscure shows of the Adult Swim canon, so at first glance it seems to fit in perfectly with the house style of the original block. In most ways it does. Absurd plots, characters designed as conduits for a certain type of joke, almost a rejection of any kind of pathos, and a repurposed animation style that reads as Adult Swim from a mile away. It all comes down to sensibility. The Space Ghost writer's room didn't just set the mold for the block, it was the block. You can draw a direct line across Space Ghost to the Brack Show, to Aqua Teen Hunger Force, to Harvey Birdman in very obvious ways. Not so for C-Lab. And then Home Movies is its own separate thing. To really understand that subtle difference, we of course have to talk about Adam Reed, Matt Thompson, and the creation of 70 over 30 productions. And now that the intro is done, I can stop pretending to take this shit so goddamn seriously. I have not yet mastered the art of being funny and informative at the same time. And it fits with the creative history of C-Lab 2021 because this story comes with some of its own cartoon hijinks worthy of any of its episodes. Adam Reed was born in 1970 in a log cabin. His early years, I'm just kidding, I don't give a fuck. Adam's story for our purposes begins after a tour in Europe. He had been doing odd jobs in France until, like all artists, he ran out of money. He got a job at Turner Home Entertainment, literally on a stop to meet his sister on the way back to his home in North Carolina. He was waiting for a ride in the lobby, looking like the early 90s, when her boss walks up and offers him a job on the spot. And the legend is born. It wasn't a nice job. It was to log all the dinosaurs in the Flintstones so they could edit them out for a promo tape with Little Debbie. You know those snack cakes you look at nostalgically on the shelf at the supermarket but never actually buy? Yeah, apparently it's owned by Seventh Day Adventists and dinosaurs are a trick of the devil so they had to go. Sorry, Dino. He had to find an episode of the Flintstones with no dinosaurs. It sounds like a joke, right? But apparently it happened. So Adam Reed has an encyclopedic knowledge of the Flintstones. It's a neat fact. 
It's also our crossing of the threshold moment, because that is what got him his first job as a PA at Cartoon Network. See, if you want to break into the entertainment industry, the easiest way is just to be born in the 60s and 70s. This was around the time Reed would meet his longtime collaborator Matt Thompson. Together, they would go on to create a bunch of shit that isn't relevant, but along the way they got the idea to take a little-known show called C-Lab 2020 and give it the Space Ghost treatment. Twenty Twenty is, by all accounts, a terrible show, fitting really, but it gets its reputation for being boring instead of existentially horrifying. Did you like C Lab the way that you liked the Flintstones? The original? The original Twenty Twenty. Unwatchable. Uh, have you ever seen it? I've seen some Ooh. of it. <laughs> Ooh. To make the pilot for C-Lab 2021, Adam Reed straight up stole the original masters to the show. It's pretty fucking gangster. After a couple of classic Lazo rejections, they had a show on CN's new lineup of original late night programming, Adult Swim. Now I hate the idea of ascribing all the work on a project to one guy, but seeing as how they named their production company 70 over 30 because, as the story goes, Reed would do 70% of the writing and 30% of the producing, and Thompson would do the opposite, I think it's fair to tell this is the Adam Reed story, under the knowledge that it's not just his story. C-Lab 2021 can best be described as Bizarro! The second best way is to call it a workplace comedy wrapped in a sci-fi parody. Episodes will often center on a twisted science fiction concept the characters have to fumble their way through. Usually it's the most ridiculous version of what someone might do in that scenario. And then C-Lab blows up. In so much as you can say C-Lab has a plot, it's about a bunch of supposedly qualified deep sea research scientists trying to unlock the secrets of the future of... One year ago. Kinda wish I'd done this earlier. Led by Maverick war hero Captain Howling Mad Murphy, the crew fights a never-ending battle against the forces of their own comedic ineptitude. What the fuck was that? Like any workplace, all problems and solutions come down to how stupid your co-workers are. The cast of C-Lab are all conduits for a certain type of joke, and there isn't really a true straight man. Dr. Quinn is C-Lab's resident genius with PhDs in four scientific disciplines. He's a bit arrogant, prone to hysteria, but he works at C-Lab, so you can't really blame him. Captain Murphy is a lot like Ahab, if Moby Dick could be anything and changed by the minute. Captain, you cannot punish the crew like this! They will mutiny! I'll slaughter them like a wolf among lambs! The seas will run red with the blood of my enemies! Marco yeah, he is. is like a parody of a classic pulp adventure hero. Man, man, I'm torn between my love of gloops and my love of killing. He's usually doing something absurdly manly to the point that the fact that he can do that shit is secondary to how it escalates. Stormy is the show's professional moron in the sense that most of them are stupid, but he's the one you can have do and say anything and it's always in context. I am bizarro Stormy. I'm regular Stormy. Shut up, idiots. Sparks, an actual psychopath. Like Veal, only babies. Hesh. Shut up! Hesh. This isn't funny. Be real funny when I crack you with a pipe. Debbie, the woman. Naturally, they use her for a lot of sex jokes. Also, bitch. That's not me being sexist. It's her most consistent character trait. Because you always get all jacked up about these little pet projects and drop them the minute you get bored. I do not. Oh, really? Hey, how are those Bosnian refugees doing? <gasps> Why does she no longer bring us food? Shut up. Uh, uh Sharko. Now roll the clip. Don't you understand that my father put his human penis in my shark mother? Among others, there's a lot of them. Madam Reed seems to specialize in writing large casts of mostly likable assholes. You know, at a glance, because they all have a similar low budge look, it's easy to assume all these shows have the same writing style if you haven't seen them in a while. But they all have totally different priorities. C Lab was actually a more subtle show by the standards of its contemporaries. Yeah, it's stupid, often stupider, but it wasn't always going for the big laugh. It could take its time and spend an entire episode building to one joke. The series opens on Captain Murphy starting a pirate radio station just because he's bored. Man, I sympathize with that. And you think it's just gonna be him rambling into a microphone for 15 minutes, which I can also relate to? But he's actually good at it. Too good, in fact. Which leads to a battle with the FCC. No, like an actual battle. 
rockets and shit. That's the joke. The FCC sucks. And then C-Lab blows up. Insane scenarios happen in 2021 all the time, but the dialogue takes a more mundane tone. Characters will just water cooler for minutes on end, and that's not really something you see from, like, Harvey Birdman. It's too madcap. I think it's because the insanity is localized. Murphy is in his own little world, but he's not as dumb as Stormy or as villainous as Sparks. It gives the writers a lot of different ways to handle the comedy. But is C-Lab funny? Only sometimes. I said that Space Ghost Coast to Coast gets consistently better as the show goes on. I don't think C-Lab is ever consistent. Yeah, I hope you didn't think I was just gonna mindlessly praise these shows because I'm an Adult Swim channel or because I like Adult Swim. Then again, don't worry too much. We haven't even gotten close to the truly bad Adult Swim shows or the actually weird or formless ones. There are a ton of winter moments in Sea Lab. Welcome to heaven. This is amazing. <laughs> you think this is amazing? This joint's crawling with dead hookers! And a whole lot of winter episodes. iRobot, Happy Cakes, Lost in Time, All That Jazz, Stimutax, Vacation, Article 4, Red Dawn. Bizarro! Bizarro! No, no, no. Bizarro! Monkey Banana Raffle! I could go on, but staying that good on an episode-by-episode -episode basis is C-Lab's biggest weakness. This show took years to develop, and I think I know why. It never really feels like it's written by people who are confident in what they're making. Please tell the writer not to address the talent. What talent? <laughs> oh, you. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, cute. Oh, yeah. Another punch-out ending? Oh, God. No! We pull out at the last shot to reveal a snow globe with C-Lab inside. What? And that is the end. It's layers upon layers, Hal. That's awesome. That's, that's Citizen Kane, you hack. Do not call me a hack, okay? You hole. I wrote for Carrot Top. Even when Space Ghost says it sucks, it's written like it's comfortable enough with itself that you'll know that's a joke. C-Lab just has this creative anxiety that I also find pretty relatable. I don't know, it's almost like it's trying to be something it hasn't quite figured out how to be yet. Let's see, there's gotta be a reason for that. What else has Adam Reed even done? Alright, let's see, I have uh, fucking High Noon Tunes, fucking uh, Frisky Dingo, yeah, that makes sense. Oh! Oh, that is... Uh, yeah, C-Lab is a proto-archer. And once you see it, it's hard not to. You can see the progression from C-Lab to Frisky Dingo to Archer in the same way you can with these four shows. All three have so many connections that they tell you a lot about the guy who made them. Reed has an interest in high culture that can actually make it hard to tell what his characters are even talking about some of the time. That's probably influenced by his time in Europe. And you gotta do something with your English degree. It's also where he came up with the idea for Archer. His characters are always stupid except for in the ways they're hyper-competent. Archer himself is basically a cross between Captain Murphy and Xander Cage. Is that his name? I don't care. Oh yeah, and everyone is always screaming. Alarm! What is this? Liquid anger! Lana! What? That's no surprise if you know about these shows. Archer even had a C Lab episode. But there's something distinctly Adam Reed that separates C Lab from the rest of the original lineup. Reed has said that Lazo never really seemed to like C Lab. If that's true, it's because C-Lab had different priorities than being weird for the sake of it. Or trying to fit in. It was doing its own thing. Like, my favorite episode of it is the one where it's just an exterior still shot of the C-Lab for the whole 11 minutes, and you just hear everybody talking. It's like a radio play, and I can't believe Mike let us put it on television, because it only costs like $600 to make. <laughs> Not to give him too much credit, but... I can't say Lazo was wrong. Maybe it sounds like I'm not being charitable enough with this show, but look, Adam Reed has even said that he doesn't like going back to it. So you were surprised at the reaction? Of the show? Of the show when it first took off. Were you surprised? Yeah, but I think also, like, I can't watch it now. C-Lab is like reading my high school diary. It's just like, I, I just can't do it. Um, you think it's not funny? I think it sometimes is too weird. That's very common for artists. I can't watch half my videos. 
It's probably because he knows he's done better since then. I'm sorry, but out of six shows plus Cowboy Bebop, not all of them are going to be equally good. I mean, how often did Aqua Teen Hunger Force feel the need to be self-conscious? It knew what it was. It knew people would think it was stupid. It didn't care. All right, fine. We'll do that. Uh, the blood is going to keep flowing. Unless, uh... Unless Carl pays tribute to the elfin elders in space. I'll do it. What, what do I do? You must give up yourself to the great red ape. Okay. How much? Sexually. Wonderful. Genius. Why isn't C-Lab Aqua Team? And the truth is, I can't possibly criticize C-Lab more than C-Lab does. I don't even need to be here. It's doing my job for me. Look at this shit. This show sucks. The writers absolutely suck. This show sucks. Cause you suck! And then again, the qualities it has aren't shared by any other show, including other shows by Adam Reed. Am I trampling on somebody's cherished collegehood memories? Maybe, but the important thing about Adult Swim isn't how perfect all their shows are. It's that they give writers and artists the room to experiment. Archer may be a better show. In fact, it definitely is. I guess Frisky Dingo is more debatable, but no, we'll get to that. But you could never have had it if it wasn't for this little tinderbox at the bottom of the sea. And then Sea Lab blows up. Shine on, you crazy robot diamond. Good work, Prescott. You took a dirty job? And you burned it to the ground. You burn it down. You burn the whole thing down like the fire style, like your little Drew Barrymore. You ruined my heart, my hopes, my dreams, but in a good way. Well, I had fun with that, and I hope you did too. If you're still listening, I can't thank you enough. And Beat Switch. So what's next? Well, I like Marvel end credit scenes, so I guess I'll just put that at the end. I also like the Q&A thing. I used to do a similar thing back when I uh, had a blog, and it was always fun. But this time I have a question for you. The people. Have I done a good enough job with the whole Adult Swim aesthetic thing? Because it's not going away. This is the whole thing. I love this shit. And I've never seen anyone go as far with it as I'd like to. I really want it to look and feel like an Adult Swim bump about Adult Swim shows. And hey, they haven't actually made stuff that looks like this for like 15 years, so I'd say it's fair game. Really tried to improve my delivery too. The first one was too slow for people, including me. But enough self-deprecation to endear myself to the audience. Let's go get some beer. I don't know, Dorak. I don't think my folks want me drinking beer. That's why we're doing it. Oh, all right.